No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. I'm here with my man, Sugar Sean. But yeah, that's definitely part of it. Dude, yeah. Well, yeah. Having a reason to lose weight is such an important thing. Mm. Whether it's obviously for a fight or just picking up chicks. Those are the two. Yeah. No, I had a penthouse cover shoot at one point, and I was like, holy fuck. Like, I have to be on the cover of penthouse with my girl in like three months. Mm. Never been more strict with my <laughs> diet of just realizing, like, I might have to actually be immortalized on a magazine cover as a fat fuck. Dude, did you get jacked? I went hard. Slim down. Definitely lost a lot of weight, you know, kept the muscle density decent. How old your baby? Eight months. Dude, me too. What, really? What, yeah. How, what, uh, November 14th. Oh, damn. Mine was November 3rd. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That is crazy. That little is girl. crazy. Yeah. Dude, how crazy is that? Amazing. Your first? Yeah. Dude, it's a fucking trip. Feels like a constant long mushroom trip. Like <laughs> every day they just get bigger and fucking the teeth and just fucking. Isn't how weird? many teeth you got on you? She's got two little ones popping two, up. At, yeah. In the bottom? Yeah. Me too. Dude. Exact same. <laughs> when they smile and they show their teeth, dude, that just does something to you yeah it's just like weird you know what's crazy is just how you know you walk into the room and you haven't seen them for a couple mm -hmm. hours and their reaction dude and it keeps getting better and better as I'm they like get older even that's crazy <laughs> dude, holy. because i was i went to uh miami um for the fight no oh, actually no, no yeah after I, went, the fight. So I fought in vegas then i went was home for a week and then i went to miami for like four days and uh, then I got home and saw her, and I just fucking lost it. It was crazy. I was like, I'm, it was just such a weird feeling. Because Danny, my, my girl, was sending me snaps of her every morning at night and shit. And he was like, I want to squeeze her. And then I saw her, and I just fucking, it was crazy. Fuck. It's Cause, a weird Because you're, like, dude. not used to having something that just so readily makes you emotional as oh, fuck. Just on so a, attached. Yeah. It's, like a, it's almost scary. What's the longest you've been away from her because of, you know, camp and shit like that? Um, I, so I do camp at home in, in Arizona. Okay. I live in Peoria, Arizona, which is like in... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's far enough there. away from fucking Scottsdale, Phoenix. I don't fuck around down there mm. because, dude, that shit, there's too many chicks. I can't mm. fuck around. I, I can't surround myself with too many girls. I lose focus, distraction. I don't have, an, I don't have no self-discipline around that. Mm. So I live in Peoria. It's out the way. Um, so I'm and when I'm in camp, I'm, I'm with the family pretty much the whole time. But when I went for fight camp, we leave Tuesday for Vegas, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, see her Sunday. So five, five days. It's not bad. It's not bad, it, and it's and it's. I'm there for business work. I'm in a different mindset. Fight week. I'm ready to fucking kill someone, you know. So it's. I'm okay being away from Danny and being away from the feminine energy. Yeah. I like being with the boys, being ready with you know with my. There, these dudes have fought before. They've competed before. It's just in a different mindset. So the fight week's not too hard being away from her. But like when I was in Miami, partying, I'm like you have that little guilty like fuck. Mm. I should be home, but I'm home 98% of the time. So, right. But yeah, what's long as you've been away? Fuck. I don't even know if it's been more than like a day or two yeah. at this point. Yeah. I got some like week long trips planned coming up, but I haven't really had to do a long stretch. Oh, that's tough. It's, it, yeah, it's tough. It's just because they change so much fucking right now. It's just, it's yeah. such a trip. Definitely. It really makes me think about like how many people have jobs where they have to be away for months at a time and just how fucking difficult that must be. Especially for the mom, like um, Elena breastfeeds still, so she's just so attached to Danny. Mm. Like, I can't, Danny can't fucking leave for a day at all. Like, she's just, my I girl can't. went to Miami for her friend's bachelorette party and she was gone for like two and a half days. And yeah, like it was. Did you have intense. some help? Yeah, I was oh, like good. dropping off her aunt's house and <laughs> yeah. shit. I mean, I, you I don't have really, to. I don't really trust myself to be that in the zone for that long yeah. for you dude, know this early on need help you yeah. need help 100 especially that little dude yeah it freaks you out too they choke on their own spit you're like, you good you good fuck yeah my like, kid right now will, will eat a handful of dirt like oh, yeah. whenever so just reach into the pot and just eat dirt dude, and seriously she, it's like i know she doesn't like it but it's, it's really weird to me she keeps doing it because <laughs> Like, the foods that she doesn't like, she just doesn't really want to eat them. But somehow the dirt, which Still I... Still gets in there. I know it doesn't taste good, but she keeps doing it. Yeah, babies are... They do their trip. So it's fun to just watch them. What, fucking. what had to happen in your life to make you feel like you were ready to be a dad? Especially just given the, the nature of your career. It feels like it's been, like, really blowing up. There's probably been a lot of times where it didn't feel like a sure thing. Like, how, right. how, how secure did you have to feel before you were ready? Dude... So Elena was definitely an accident. I, oh, okay. I wanted kids eventually. Like I wanted kids since I was like fourteen. I was like I knew I wanted to be a dad, hundred percent. Right. Uh, Danny, when I met her, we've been together for seven, eight years. She didn't want kids. 
and then slowly over the years, she's like, yeah, I could see us having a kid. Elena was a complete accident, dude. But the craziest thing of it all is like, I swear to God, I don't really believe in God, like a certain religion or whatever, but dude, the universe had me have a baby mm. to keep me disciplined, to keep me fucking grounded because it's too fun to party, dude. Mm. I fucking, I don't party that often, but when I go out, I'm like, holy shit, I can see how people get lost in this world. Mm. And for me, like I was in Miami, they're like, let's go to Cancun Monday. I'm like, dude, my flight Sunday back home. I gotta go, I have a baby, I gotta go home. And you're around all these rich people all, all of a sudden who don't have anything holding them back to dude. the real world. There's no work on Monday. Exactly, so having a baby, I, sw- I like, it was the craziest thing. Like, I don't remember busting in her. It had to have been like pre-cum, cause I don't, it, I didn't bust it. I've been pulling out for Respect. years. Yeah. So, dude, having a baby was a fucking accident, but it was literally something bigger. Like she, she was meant to be f- to keep me disciplined, to keep me on the right path. Definitely. Because uh, partying is too fucking fun, dude. Especially if, like, I've been grinding for ten. I'm 26 right now. I started training when I was 16, and the professional fighter lifestyle. I, I lived that lifestyle even when I was an amateur. It's just go to the gym, train, you come that, home. Because, but you always felt like you knew this was like a sure thing like this had to happen or at the least you were going to give it your all until you got blown as close up or as just possible. like get, yeah like it. just really making it to the ufc and just really yeah. being something yeah I, I always i wanted to be a performer like dude when i was in middle school i was like i want to be in the nfl or nba i'm from helena montana it's right. fucking tiny there's i'm like okay i didn't realize that wasn't realistic until i realized fucking guys in the nfl nba are six fucking eight and like i was not that wasn't realistic after a while mm. i wanted to be a performer can't fucking rap even though all the chicks are like so you're a rapper i'm like no i, I fight and they're like what the fuck they no, no chicks know who the fuck i am ever and in miami we we're out and they all thought i was a rapper i was like well fuck it, we'll go with it it seems like so weird as a ufc fighter because it's like everybody like a lot a very large percentage of people watch mma but then it takes so much to make them really remember one fighter in particular, but you've had a bunch of those moments yeah. where everybody was paying attention to you. So you get famous or more famous in these waves yep. of blowing yep. up every six months or three months or however long it Dude, is, right? Each, each fight, yeah, each fight I blow up a little bit more. I knew, like when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, like I knew I was gonna make it. I had this feeling that I was gonna make make it, whatever making it it is, having money. Well, originally got into fighting because I wanted chicks. Mm. That, that's what it came down. I wanted to, I wanted, I was insecure and I thought fighting would make me get chicks. So I kind of, that's a, a, originally the reason I started fighting. And then training, what motivated me was money, chicks. Like that was what motivated me. Now we're there. And I'm like, fuck, I have that. But that shit's a distraction. Mm. And it's fucking, it's a dangerous game to play. Um, but I do a good job of, I do. I, I can party after my fights for a certain amount of weeks, a couple of weeks, whatever. I'll fight three times a year. Um, like right now, I'll probably fight in December. Mm. And then I got a couple couple things planned where I'll, I'll party for a little bit. But for the most part, I got it on lock. Where I'm, 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 I live such a disciplined life that I can afford to go out and do that a couple times a, a, a year. Did you see that uh, Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance? Oh, You're Dennis Rodman, Dude. like <laughs> taking, a, taking a break from the yeah, season to go exactly. party in Vegas and shit. Fucking take a flight flight in on, on fight night no yeah that shit was crazy do, though do you kind of relate to that though like feel like you you need to release you couldn't just be a warrior just trapped in the gym every day over and over without turning up a little bit god i, I feel like i feel like i could just completely avoid partying and just it, it's after fights that i want just because those training camps are so long and so disciplined for two months eight weeks pure discipline diet sleep like dude no one does training camp like me as far as um, I sleep. I, I'm. I, I'm trying to master my sleep. I try to master recovery. Mm. I cold plunge every night. Stretch every night. Do everything right. Not overtrain. I, I surround myself with, you know, the best strength and conditioning coach, the best jujitsu player, the best. Like my my team is so solid, and it's just such a disciplined two months that I almost, I almost tell myself I need to go out and have fun. Mm. Sometimes I don't even want to, but I just like I feel like I'm pulled in. I got it. I got to do it. I got to experience it. Um, and then when I do, then it's like, oh, I don't want to go back to the discipline. Mm. So it's always just a balance of fucking knowing, knowing what I need to do and what I want. And I got to do what I need. Cause I always, uh, imagine that to be competitive in the UFC that you pretty much have to just be like a, a total warrior all the time. And when I was listening to you with, uh, Theo Vaughn, you were talking about how after weigh-ins you'll, you'll see dudes just like going to the buffet and eating French toast before Dude, the fight. Fuck. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So there's a bunch of dudes who kind of are fucking there around. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then those guys will never be champ for mm. the most part. I mean, there's, there's rare people that can eat 
like shit and and, and not take it a hundred percent serious. But for the most part, if you want to be world champ, which obviously that's that's the main goal. I want to I want to get the belt at 135, move up to 145. I want to be a legend in the sport. Mm. And uh, you got to fucking be disciplined, dude. And it's funny. I'll train two months in a row and then go out one night and like people are like, you need to fucking start training. What are you doing partying? It's fun. I don't really let I don't really read too many comments and stuff. But that shit is funny that um, people I, if you just look at my Instagram, it doesn't look like I fucking train that much. Mm. But I'm, I mean, I'm in the gym all the time getting better yeah it's kind of like uh when girls are like getting plastic surgery and they feel like they got to put that on instagram it's like you could just show us <laughs> yeah. the final product i think it's dope to show yeah. up at the fight beat the fuck out of yeah, someone and yeah. they they're not thinking that you're just this warrior 24 7 right. before that 100 percent. i respect that were you beating the shit out of people before you got into mma like wh- wh- how many fist fights were, were you getting into as a kid and stuff was that something you were drawn to not really. I was just so, I was like a pretty small kid, 15, 16 years old, super fucking insecure. Go to high school, like just worried about getting picked on um, from an older whoever. Um, I wasn't super con- confrontational. I didn't want to be in fights because I felt like I'd get my ass whooped. Mm. Um, so, so I didn't really get in any street fights. And then uh, when I started kickboxing, I was naturally pretty good because I played basketball, football, soccer, baseball. So I was an athlete since I was fucking three, four years old playing any sports, t-ball, whatever the fuck it was. I just became a really good athlete doing all those different sports. So when I went and kickbox, we didn't really have a – in Helena, there was not a high-level coach. You can't get really, really good in Montana. You just mm-hmm. There's not a good enough gym. So we were sparring. Just we you throw on gloves and sparring. I was beating just pretty much everyone up. I was kind of the man at the gym eventually. Um and that's when I moved to Arizona, and then I was just the worst dude at the gym. Mm. Like, I, I thought I was the fucking man, and I moved, came to Arizona, and it was the bottom, like, the worst dude, and it was fucking, it was like a shock. Like, what the fuck? There's levels. Yeah. But I, I, for whatever reason, I just fucking, I was like, okay, I can learn what these guys are doing, why I'm losing, and I'm a better athlete, that I could eventually beat them and then eventually we started beating a couple guys beating a couple guys beating a couple guys and fucking just i mean now we're at the level where that you know i train with such high level people that it's always going to be competition i'm not going to go into the gym and, and be the top dog right it's, some days you are some days you're not but that's where you need to be but were you getting frustrated during those times like was there ever times where you felt like maybe i just really am not this dude dude a hundred percent a lot the first time i went there is when i stayed for um seven days i flew down i think it was like seven eight days whatever it was and it was fucking every single practice I would leave crying. I was mm. 18 years old, complete ego just shattered because I thought I was the man. Come down every single practice, whether it was wrestling, get just sh- shit on. I've never wrestled in my life until I moved there. Um, even even kickboxing, I'm like, damn, there's guys that can can hit me. I've never really been hit. Um, so after every practice, I w- it hurt. I was like, fuck, dude. I, maybe this ain't for me, but. What the fuck else am I gonna do? I wasn't gonna go to school. I wasn't gonna go to college. I knew that in like third grade. I was like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> fuck school. Knew I wasn't gonna go to there. Um, I had no other plans. And I was like, I enjoy training. And, and I, I, I don't remember when I was like, damn, I could make it fighting. But uh, yeah, I knew I wasn't gonna do anything else. Right. And I think Connor was kind of blowing up at this point. So I was like, damn, this motherfucker's like fun to watch he's an entertainer it's more than just fighting mm. that's what i was just so i was like damn this is more than fighting the press conferences were fun i would r- listen to all of his interviews and just be entertained by his by him talking right and i just fucking thought it was so sweet that he just he, he's an entertainer outside the outside the octagon that just that that really inspired me to be like damn like I can do more than just fight Mm. and and create all these other businesses. Okay, guys, just a quick word from our sponsor right here. Have you ever wondered why there isn't a Netflix for porn? Nearly everyone watches it, so why is it that hardly anyone pays for it? Here's why. Existing porn options are A, free porn with tons of trashy ads and sketchy slash questionable websites, or B, pay a fortune for premium and get minimal content. Bellissa thought that there should be a better option, so Bellissa made a better option. 
Bellisa Plus is the Netflix of porn with unlimited access to a growing library of over 50 channels and 30 studios. Bellisa knows exactly what they're doing. Bellisa Plus adds 100 new high definition slash 4K videos every month with zero ads or upsells. You get full access to award winning series Bellisa House, the first reality studio where porn stars actually choose who they want to have sex with. Well, to celebrate Bellisa Plus's launch, Bellisa wants to give everyone a chance to experience what premium porn should be. They're offering my followers a free week of full access to see what it's all about. How? Well, you just visit the link down in the description and you can become a part of the future of adult content by joining Bellisa Plus, the Netflix of porn today, 18 and over only. And now we return to the Sugar Sean O'Malley interview. You know, when I was watching uh, a bunch of your fights getting ready for this. I was thinking about the first thing that I saw that made me actually get like really excited about MMA. And it was like a commercial for UFC. And it was just Brock Lesnar beating the <laughs> fuck out of Frank Mir. And I just like, I already like kind of knew who Frank Mir was for some reason. And I just saw him like, they're, they're like up against the fucking fence. And he's just go, 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 go. Like he just hits him with these tiny little punches and knocks him out. And I was just and like. his hands were like that big. Yeah. Yeah, and I just had to fucking like go and like download every UFC fight and like actually figure out what the fuck, like how this guy came to like be. I'm like, this guy's a wrestler. Dude. And then th that just like set me off where I, all of a sudden I had like a year where I started doing jujitsu and MMA shit Damn. and like, and just like watching fights constantly. And then at some point I just kind of got out of it, anything besides watching it. Right. But like, do you have like a version of that where you first saw the UFC and thought this is, <laughs> what I need to be a part of. It's that's funny because the first time I saw UFC, I was like 13, 14 years old. My dad was watching it and I thought it was the most, dis I was like, what the, f <laughs> how are you watching that? I remember how like, is this legal? Dude, I remember watching people get kicked in the stomachs and thinking like, how does that not break? Like, how does that not break your ribs? Like, how does that not fucking, right. how do they just take that? And it was the most disgusting thing. I couldn't watch it. Um, yeah, and that was like oh, fuck. I'm trying to think. It was Chuck versus Tito. Mm. Um, I think it was. Uh, I remember watching Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber. Like those are the people that I remember watching first. It's crazy because I could fight. You know, I could. You know, Dominic Cruz is a potential matchup for me. Um, whether it's my next fight or next next fight, whenever it is, it's crazy to think because I remember watching him so long ago before I even started fighting. Mm. Um, and now I, I, I get to beat him up eventually. It's crazy. Right. Damn, you just reminded me even more that one time around that time, I met this girl and she was a fucking big UFC fan and Uriah Faber was fighting and she wanted to go watch it. And then after that, we went back to my house and she told me that she had herpes, but then she gave me head anyway. Damn. So what does that mean? I mean, so I didn't get herpes, so I felt pretty good about oh, good. it. But, you know, I mean, it was just like a fun memory. <laughs> I haven't thought about memory. that girl in like 10 years. God um, damn. Damn. Dude, but yeah, girls are a fucking distraction, mm. aren't they? How? But how would you rate the way that, that women react to you as a fighter? Cause like, they don't fucking know. It's tr like some, some do. The hardcore, there's some like hardcore girl UFC fans that right. fucking. Like, no, I mean, even yesterday we were at the mall or the other day we were at the mall and this, this chick was married and she, she wasn't like a tr attractive at all, but she was freaking out. Her husband came with me and she said, Hey, can my wife get a pic? She was going like this, just breathe, <laughs> just like shaking, like couldn't believe it. But she had probably only seen me like in the cage looking like a fucking character. Right. Cause that's what, that's what we look like when we're in the cage, the fucking 4k camera, like colorful tattoos, my hair, you just look like a character in a fucking video game or a movie. So she was tripping out. But, uh, yeah, most girls seriously don't fucking – they have no idea. I feel like once they get accustomed to it, then they get it. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm sure, like, you in the club right after the UFC fight yeah. is a different yeah. experience than, like, you at the club at a random time right, right. far away from that. 100%. No, I, yeah. Like, in Vegas, right after the fight, we went out, and uh, everyone knew the fights just happened. They knew I just beat that dude up. Right. And uh, they definitely knew then. But, yeah, I mean, in Miami, it was, for the most part – so you're a rapper. It was fucking funny. Right. Like, but, I wish. But every fight that you get, do you just feel like more and more, does it feel like you have more and more pressure or do you feel more and more confident that you're going to be the champion after every fight? Because it feels like this most recent one was just another huge yeah. boost in, in terms of your clout in this whole thing. Yeah, dude. It's The more fucking people watching, the more, the brighter those fucking lights, mm. the better I'm performing, dude. I fucking eat that stuff up. I fought three fights in a row, no crowd. Mm. I didn't have a problem performing uh, with no crowd 
because I, st- I still, I, it's a mission. I got to go in there. I'm training, for, you know, I'm preparing for eight weeks and I know what I need to do. But dude, when like last fight, T-Mobile Arena, 20,000 people sold out, that, that walking out. really motivated <sighs> you? Dude, it's just fucking, it's a different, it's a drug that you can't replicate, dude. It's such a fucking high. Yeah. So sweet. Like those moments, like you uh, knocking the dude, was Eddie with the mustache? Yeah, yeah. You knocking him out and having there be nobody to cheer. It was sad. <laughs> but it's like, it's such epic footage in a it way. You, you really get to hear his head bounce off the fucking ground. Yeah. And you can hear him snoring after. <sighs> it, yeah. It, it to is. his credit, he seemed totally fine like two minutes right, later. Was like, I'm good. Nice shot. I, he I, did. He I, said I was nice thinking, shot. I'm like, wow, this guy must be really <laughs> fucking used to this. Dude, but the thing about concussions, it's fucking. Have you had a concussion? Yes. Dude, they're the worst fucking. The worst. Some people get them worse than others, but I've had a couple concussions where I have to be in a in a room, lights off, completely dark, can't look at your phone, can't look at TV, any sound hurts for days, dude. And you just it, it's the worst fucking feeling. Um, like ha- like in training or like, like talking after fights. I've had it. I've had it. Um, I haven't had the my contender series fight. I don't know if you're familiar with the, that one. That's, the one with Snoop Dogg yeah, announcing Snoop and shit. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was the worst training camp I had ever in my life. I got concussed like two, three weeks before that fight. And I was wake up in the middle of the night puking, like just, just from getting hit hard and sparring. Two or three weeks before. before it. Dude, and I walked into the cage at 138 pounds, which is, so I weighed in at 136. And then I walked in at 138, which is fucking insane. Like my last fight, I probably was 153, 154, uh. walking into the cage. Um, but I couldn't eat. My head hurt. It just it, it was a shitty camp. And then for me to go out there and knock that guy out the way I did, it was I was like, what the fuck? Like the, something's. That's gonna be even bigger boost to confidence. I, exactly. Like I'm, like I'm not the best version of myself, and dude, I still got this done. I'm like I can go perform like that, feeling like that, in, in my every single fight. Well, no. Um, my last four fights, dude, been going into the into the into the octagon, no injuries, feeling just fucking good, and that's mm. because I switched up a lot of things. I hired a nutritionist. He he, he uh, I, I do like a stool sample, blood sample, urine sample, uh, saliva sample. He looks at all my shit and fucking tells me what I need to be eating, what causes inflammation, what's gonna help me perform the best. Um, and then my strength and condition, uh, his name is Dan Garner. And then my strength and conditioning coach, Brandon Harris, uh, my last like five fights, I've had just like a solid fucking team. Mm. And, uh, I go into the cage feeling like a hundred percent, which is rare, dude. A lot of, a lot of fighters don't go into the cage feeling good. I would, I'd say 99% of the people that go in the cage have, they're dealing with something, something mm. that's fucked up, whether they just ate too much after weigh-ins and they got fucking diarrhea or they fucking rolled their ankle two weeks before the fight and they haven't been able to run right. just something every single fighter in there is probably dealing with something but when you were dealing with that concussion did you think about canceling the fight like how close were you to that decision because that's got to be like the most momentous decision for a fighter yeah and th- thinking back on that now i don't remember ever thinking like i should reschedule it, it was just such a huge opportunity it was like season one um of dana white's contender series i go out there and knock this guy out or just win, I have a, a, a shot to get in the UFC. It's hard to get in the UFC. Like, it's not easy. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and I, but I was so young. I don't, I don't remember ever thinking about pulling out. Um, I, I don't remember exactly what I was thinking. But I, I was confident going in there, but I was, like, gassed the fuck out. Even in that first round. Like, that fight, there was a couple of seconds left in the round. I don't know how much longer. But I was gassed the fuck out. If we would have made it into the second, third round, I don't even know if I would have been able to stand up. Right. Just because I hadn't been able to train, the, the diet, the, everything was just so shit. But I don't ever remember thinking I should pull out. It was just too big of an opportunity. Mm, it's just not in you. Yeah, I mean, fuck, even now, like, if, if something really bad happened, now I've, 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 I have money, I have security, I have money, I would, I would pull out. If, if it was bad enough to where I'm like, if it was like that, mm. now I would pull out. I don't want to go fight some top top level dude and risk getting fucking more brain damage like mm. that's the number one thing i've learned like i said i've been training for 10 years i've had over 30 fights so so many fight camps it's like i gotta take care of my brain that's the number mm. fucking one thing especially having a baby now got a mm. fucking family i gotta take care of my brain more than anything yeah man i i, I keep showing that that eddie knockout oh, to people beautiful. like <laughs> Like people who who are you know I'm like I'm interviewing this fucking UFC dude he's so sick and they they don't know what I'm talking about so I just show them that fight because it's like a 30 second clip yeah. on YouTube and it's so gnarly that it's just everybody gets the idea that sequence the whole sequence is so sick just that little tiny faint oh okay I was thinking like you couldn't have told someone you were gonna do that two seconds before you did it right 
Like you, you have this right. engraved in your brain, but like that, the opportunity where you knew that that would be a good combo to throw, like that, that really kind of comes about completely unthinkingly. Dude. And that's something I find really fascinating. Yeah. It's just literally like, I feel like I have a really good, it's a skill you can build for letting go. Like once I get in that cage, I'm fucking free, dude. And I think you can see that in my fights. I'm free. I'm flowing. There's not, mm. there's, I'm not thinking in there. I'm not, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? What, what just happened? Blah, blah. I'm not thinking at all. Mm. There's zero thoughts going through my mind. I'm literally just free flowing and fucking just whatever's happening is happening. I'm not thinking about what's happening. So yeah, two seconds before that, I didn't know I was going to throw that. Just, I mean, looking back at that fight, I rewatched it a ton. I always rewatch all my fights, but I threw that same little combo at the beginning of the fight and mm. I barely missed him like that same little the combo and uh but yeah that I, I, I it just happens mm. it's fucking nuts like when when you made your UFC debut were you on edge a bit compared to how you feel now going into fights where you have so much of a reason to feel confident going in yeah that's a good question um I remember going into my debut I, I fought a kid named Terry on where uh, I definitely wasn't as confident as I am now because I've knocked out a good amount of people since then. Mm. But even in that fight leading up to it, I had knocked out a fucking a lot of people. Like I just come off that contender series fight, so I just knocked that dude out. Right. I thought for sure I was gonna knock this dude out. But for for whatever reason, dude, I ate a I was eating a vegan diet for, for six months before that fight. I'm like, I might as well try it. I fucking watched some stupid ass documentary on Netflix and I'm like, I'm a vegan. And even saying it back now, I'm like, God, that fucking sounds stupid. But I, I ate a vegan diet and even looking at my body in that in that fight, I was just I wasn't muscular. I wasn't I didn't have that pop. I didn't have enough power. Um But I was I was confident. But n right now I'm 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 so yeah fucking super confident. Right now. Yeah, when you what, how would you describe the negative side effects of the vegan thing? Which I am completely in the same position as you. Dude. Where I was vegan when I was like 18 for like three four years, and this shit, my body just did not heal the same way. Yeah, I think initially people are like, oh, I feel so good because they quit eating so much shit, mm, and yeah. then after a couple of weeks, months, whatever, you're not getting the fucking protein and stuff you need, and and. I don't know. I'm not a fucking expert in it, but I just don't think you get enough enough nutrients, and I'm sure you can supplement for it and all that. But I enjoy eating meat. I feel like it's fucking makes me feel way stronger, especially after lifting. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think I think, but I, everyone's so different. Everyone's insides are so different. People fucking digest differently. But for me, eating meat's definitely I has to. I have to. Yeah. No, I'm. Exactly the same. I, 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 and it's, people I, that are just I, vegan, they, they say it all the time. It just it drives me crazy. I have some friends though who like their doctors have basically told them that they have to like eat dramatically less, you know, red meat and mm. and really most meats in general. And that scares me because I honestly have a hard time imagining getting like satisfied from eating without there being some kind of meat as the centerpiece of whatever I'm eating. You know, like I eat a fucking salad. But I'm like aiming for the pieces of chicken right, right. and then I like get the vegetables around them in that one bite. Like yeah. that's the meal. Yeah, dude, that would suck. I think the quality of meat too, there's just mm. such shit. You can go to fucking McDonald's and get a nasty ass beef patty that's probably like 10% beef and fucking 90% fucking plastic. Yeah. Or you can go get some 100% grass fed um, beef and, and quality shit that your, your body will digest way better. So the quality of meat fucking affects that a lot you know what's one thing i really love about you as a fighter never celebrating <laughs> that is <laughs> so that badass bro <laughs> oh, are you are you're adding a now, little bit I, I, but the walk-off the eddie one was so clean the the walk-off uh um what was it the, the walk-off's clean when you just fucking oh yeah that walk that was the most gangster dip. thing i ever seen i it was like was. what the I fuck is gangster. wrong with this dude he looks like a fucking killer just like nah too easy uh no my new thing now is just a little jump shot uh mm. i did it the last the thomas almeida fight two fights ago and then this last fight hit a little jump shot sons were in the fucking chipper lost uh but just a little jump shot fucking but the the, the walk-offs are clean mm. we no celebration uh they're clean I, I used to watch fedor all the time mm. i don't know if you remember yeah, yeah. him but he's like the, the greatest UFC or mma fighter who never fought in the ufc possibly yep. and that always to me like when we talk about like character building I was like, that, the fact that he doesn't even put his fucking hands in the air just solidifies my mind with him being like a Russian sociopath, like murderer. Dude, like, that, Russians. That, it's crazy. The Russians fucking taken over. Yeah. Like Habib, um, Islam, Islam, the um, Makachev, I think. Right. Like these, dude, the Russians are fucking gangsters. 
Mm. They're, they're tough. They're always a tough fight. I want to fight the, the top dude in the division right now. Uh, he's number one right now, Peter Yan. Yeah. He, he's Russian. Dude, I want to fight Peter in Russia <laughs> next year, 2022. You want to be the bad guy. I do, but I feel like I could spin it to where I, I feel like, the, I don't know. We'll see how, how it plays out, but dude. Peter in Russia would be legendary. Really? It would be fucking legendary. Going to Ru- Russia would be kind of scary. That's Even a tough culture in there. general. I yeah. went out there like maybe 10 years ago on this BMX trip. And I mean, honestly, it was great. But like it is like a very, very like serious culture. Dude, well, their religion, right, too? Muslims? Uh, are? are there a lot of Muslims in Russia? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know, dude, I don't think it. they're allowed to have a fucking religion. Isn't Putin not not really okay that? Oh yeah, I don't Putin know. just owns them, huh? That yeah. shit's crazy over there. And they all hate him, but they can't say anything about it. Yeah, allegedly, they're all terrified. Like they yeah. honestly, like it, it's weird being in a place. And they warned me before I went there. Like if a girl's acting like she's really into you. Don't believe it. She's trying to get the fuck out. They're all trying to get out of there. And you can't even imagine like a whole country where everybody wants to leave. I would get suckered right in. I'd be like, no, I think it's genuine. I think she likes me. Yeah. No, I was kind of <laughs> like that too. And then I met this girl oh, and we were kicking it for fuck. weeks. And then we kept talking afterwards. And then at a certain point, I was like, what the fuck dude, am I doing? I want to smash some Russian biscuits. <laughs> Have you? Just that one, actually. God, dude. Her accents are fucking... Mm. Russian would be my number one that I would want to smash. But the one thing I learned from her is that it's really, really pointless and stupid to be trying to date somebody who doesn't have mastery of the English language. Yeah, just underrated. You, you, like it's <laughs> that just would so be fucking tough. Dude. <laughs> like even like like say you meet a girl at the bar and she's kind of a dumbass and you're trying to talk to her. That that's tough. Yeah. They mm. like a lot of these girls have like a couple hundred words at their disposal. Like we take it for granted that like what we're doing right now is actually like very, very difficult for ninety nine percent of people on earth. I don't know, probably way more than that speak English, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, for real, that would be tough. Chick's not I mean, it's hard enough to talk to a girl in English. Yeah. A lot of times. <laughs> Russian. <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, so like I have to ask, like, when you were on your break injury wise how long actually were you injured and how hard was that for you to deal with mentally i was i I was out i fought march 7th 2018 and then i fought march 3rd 2020 or no i think it was march 3rd and then i fought march 7th so it was over two years i had a um liz frank surgery in my right foot when i fought andre soccer mom at ufc 222 and it, my foot snapped with three minutes left in the fight. And the mm. kid took me down like a oh, fucking that one. idiot. Yeah, dude. yeah, that was crazy. Like, that was did, crazy. Do you think that he just I think was I, out of it enough? That I, he, I dropped him in the first round. I was fucking beating his ass for, for 12 minutes of the fight. Yeah. He was probably concussed. He was probably like, okay, I'm just getting pieced up. I don't think it hit me once. Yeah, because you beat his ass so bad at one point that he couldn't even find his corner. Yeah, he's like, fucking Ugh. stumbling around. That so, was so funny. <laughs> so I think he was just concussed. And then he had the opportunity to take me down. Because in his mind, he's probably like, okay, I can't. I, w- I mean, even on one foot, I was fucking hopping, slapping him up. So he took me down. Um, and then the fight ended up playing out. And my, and I, the fucking doctor came in. He, like, squeezed the top of my foot where it snapped uh, like a fucking idiot. But so that surgery was, like, a pretty major surgery. It used, like, it, c- it could potentially be a career-ending surgery for some people. It's called Liz Frank. And uh, that fucking thing took s- literally two years it still fucking gives me problems or, like, it'll still hurt. Really? But, dude, that fucking surgery sucks so bad. The whole the whole process of it sucked. Like, there's still scar tissue in there that I probably didn't get rubbed out enough through uh, physical therapy. That still fucks with me. Um, and then I had a right labrum surgery in my hip, which had been torn f- for two fights. So my UFC debut and that, that fight where I broke my foot, my labrum had already been torn, uh-huh. which is, it depends how bad the tear is. You could have a small tear like I had and still be able to perform. But, dude, I could, every time I ran, it just was the worst pain. But after that fight, it, it was torn enough to where I was like, okay, I need to get surgery. So I had, like, back-to-back surgeries. Right. And uh, But after I felt like a fucking new human, I was like, holy shit, it felt were, so much better. Were you kind of, like, tormented during that time, just thinking about, like, what if? What if this doesn't fucking work? Yeah, a little bit. It was it was like fuck. I was twenty what was like twenty two years no. Yeah, twenty two years old. So I was like, I'm so fucking young right now. I knew I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna fight till I'm thirty five, thirty six. Like that's the that's the plan. So I was like, I still have a long fucking time. Right. Um but dude I I literally would just listen to podcasts, like just listen to podcasts, read, fucking journal, just try to keep my mind on the on the right path. Like still, what do I gotta do today that's gonna help me? 
just every day I got to do something that's going to benefit me, whether it was reading, journaling, because fucking when you're laid up with a boot on, you can't do much, can't drive anywhere. Mm. Um, and also gaming. Right. Fucking Fortnite was popping up at that time. I was fucking, I could play, I could play Fortnite eight hours a day, no problem at that time. <laughs> eight, nine yeah. hours. And I was streaming on Twitch. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm making a little bit of money. I, I wasn't popping on Twitch like I am right now compared to back then. Um, but I was gaming. That helped a lot. Fuck trying to just keep my mind right. But yeah, two years was a long fucking time, dude. Especially because when I was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, I was fighting four or five times a year. Mm. Like always had something coming up. Always had that that like goal. I need to eat good for this. I need to do like I always had that. And then those two years, it was a fucking trip. But now looking back, I'm like, damn, that shit flew. Yeah. Because when you talk about like starting businesses uh, adjacent to the fighting thing, like did the the Twitch stuff and the podcasting was that stuff that like might not have come around if it wasn't for the fact that you had a bunch of downtime? Um, I think I was no, probably not because I was streaming before that, and then the podcast I do it with my with my coach, my best friend Tim Welch, and uh, he was he was always the one pushing the podcast. I'm like, dude, I got other shit. I'm down to fucking sit there and talk every once a week. So he was the kind of the one that was like built the podcast, put it on Apple, put on like got the cameras figured all that shit out and i would just show up and talk but now we're 160 some episodes in we do it every week we do it for a couple of years and it's you know we're making money we got sponsors all that shit so you know that that i think would have just happened just because tim wanted to make it happen mm. uh streaming is just something i've i fucking love gaming dude i fuck gaming so fun for me playing with the boys like hopping on putting the headset on and just going into a virtual fucking battleground and hanging out with the boys that shit was just so fun to me how many viewers you get um, right, right now I've been popping off right after the fight. It's always way more. Mm. I've, I had a thousand for, for a couple of days. Now it's back down to like 500, 400, 500. Um, but dude, yeah, gaming, gaming on just streaming in general is so much more fun than just gaming, like without a stream, right. not cause you're just making money, but just, you do something sick. You look over at the chat they're like, wow, yeah. like it's just fucking fun. You ever, do you ever fuck around? I stream uh online poker. I oh, play all these tournaments shit, okay. and shit. And that's fucking it stressful. Uh, it it, it kind of is, but I really like the the feeling of being on stream because of the fact that it forces me to try to like really verbalize my decisions and not just like sort of like when you're playing poker, it's kind of like you can just allow yourself to be like, fuck it, let's gamble. Mm. But like when I'm sitting there and I know that there's people watching <laughs> that are going to tell me if I fuck up that it's just like that much more pressure for me to play well. And yeah. I find like I, I, I kind of learn a lot more when I'm doing that. Yeah, but dude. poker is a weird thing. Poker? What do you play? Uh, Texas Hold'em on America's Card Room. Shout out to them. Used code No Jumper. <laughs> Ooh, dude, Texas Hold'em. I haven't played that in so long, but I got, I was telling my my buddies back in Arizona, I'm like we have to have a fucking poker night, dude. We oh, have yeah. to have a poker night because that shit would be so fun. Oh yeah. We got we got to make the hack. I could get happen. the site to fuck with you if you wanted to uh, do anything Online for sure. Poker, they would huh? they would fuck with you for sure. You can play in America. This is the only site you can play on in America. Really? Mm. Damn. You like play? Do you play poker not online ever? Um, sometimes, but usually like from my perspective, it's like, I don't really want to play poker unless I'm either like, like, unless I can do something else at the same time. Cause a lot of times I'll play poker for eight hours, but I'm also like Damn. listening to hella podcasts right. and just like getting so much more like ready for the interviews that I have mm. the next week versus like, if I just go to the casino and play, it's, it just feels like kind of a waste of time. So like, I like going and playing these games where they live stream it from the casino. So, Damn. cause then I feel like I'm like sort of building more of a name for myself in the poker world and shit. When you play poker online, are you playing with random people or buddies? Yeah, but the other day, actually, I played this game where we all put in 20,000 and the other people... Oh, I heard about that. The like, other people were like Logan Paul, Mr. Beast. Ninja. like All people, yeah, who who definitely, like, 20,000 means less to them than it means to Paul. me. Yeah, they're like, what? I heard Logan say, like, yeah, I lost 20,000 on the on his podcast. Like, it was yeah. no big deal. Because they it wasn't being recorded, so they were just talking about their deals and stuff. And, like, let, let me tell you, if I've ever, like, felt comfortable money-wise, hearing the fucking bags that they bring in, I was just like... Like, all right, like, I, I just cannot stop yeah. grinding because these dudes, <laughs> it's fucked oh, up how much fuck. they're getting. Yeah, no, that is that is crazy. I, what, I, Ninja's probably popping the most out of all those guys. I wonder. Yeah, but Mr. Beast and Logan Paul, KSI, Jesus Christ, yeah, they're no, all killing yeah, it. Right. Crazy. Yeah, Mr. Beast, fucking Steve, Big Steve. Steve with will those. do it, he's yeah. Starting, he's going crazy, yeah. too. You see that video of him buying all, or there's the video that Brother, you were in. Yeah, he bought shit, you one, too, right? I've been rocking it. Give me chain, too. Steve is mad. It was, that, that was crazy because I, he was at the fights in Vegas. Right. And I, would, I like, blacked out for the first time that night after my fight. And I oh. met, messaged him on Instagram, sent him two videos. I have no idea what the fuck I said. But he's like, you're, he's like, you're the man. You want to come out and film? 
uh, hang out with Six in Miami right. that next week. And I was like, what the fuck? Hell yeah, that sounds so fun. So I, that was the first time I met him. Uh, super nice. He's 22. 20 fucking two years wow, old. He's a young kid. Yeah. Um, newly single. Newly single. Steve. Steve <laughs> will do it LLC. Dude, that, that, yeah, he, he's a fucking man. Steve's cool, cool dude. Right. No, he's, he's sick. I we can't believe he gives so much shit away. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, bro, if you can buy half a million dollars worth of jewelry for your friends, like, what how much fuck? does that mean that you're bringing in that you feel comfortable doing that? I'm like, it's amazing, but I'm also just, I'm very, but he keeps saying too, like, I'm more, he's like kind of worried, like, what his mom is going to say. <laughs> I know he's always saying, Mom, sorry, fuck you. Like, funny though. But and that's like, what I realized, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm his mom in this situation because yeah. I'm sitting there just being like, oh, Steve, I don't know if this is a good idea. I know. I don't know if you should buy four Teslas this week. <laughs> you already, uh, were you already like a Nug Boys fan before you met him? And shit? I wasn't, a, I didn't really watch it too much. It's funny because I started actually watching Steve Will Do It videos mm. that fight camp, like, okay. a couple weeks out from that, all fight week, Tim and I were just chilling at the hotel. We're quarantined in Vegas, dude. It was funny because we watched so many of those videos, and then he was. I don't even know if I knew he was going to be there or not. I knew the Nelk boys and Steve, they go to the fights. I right. didn't know if he's going to be at that one. Dana's specifically. got a huge hard on for him. Who? Dana just oh, has a huge hard oh, on dude, for him. Dude, we FaceTime Dana every night. <laughs> he just, doesn't seem like he really likes anybody, but he fucking loves, loves those fucking dudes. Loves, and we call it, Steve would call him every night, just drunk. And he's like, make sure you don't hurt him. Don't hurt O'Malley. Yeah. I have like four selfies from me and Steve to Dana, just fucking drunk as shit well side note does that feel weird that somebody like dana white is clearly like very invested in your career like you becoming a big star and you not going on a losing streak is like one of the better things that could happen for the ufc like if they're able to build you up to connor's level then that's the best case scenario for them dude the ufc is an entertainment business 51 percent a 49 percent fighting business mm. it's an dude, they're 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 an entertainment business dude they know what they're doing they know how to build stars they built connor ronda um izzy like they yeah i mean it, it, it's it is good but it's it's yeah i don't i don't know um, I'd rather be on this good side than his bad side. Because mm, so if you don't like people, he don't give a fuck. He'll tell you he doesn't like you. He'll fucking. But like you must, at least in the comments or whatever, you must get accused of them sort of being like favoriting you. Would you say that that's true? And does it feel like that in your actual life? I feel like um, a lot of people want me to fight someone ranked. And that, that that's the plan. I, I've never, like I picked uh, that last fight when someone pulled out. They sent me a, a, a list of a couple people, and I picked the hardest dude on there. Mm. But then he said he couldn't make weight. So it, it I don't know what uh, – it's hard to say. Next fight, a lot of people want me to fight someone ranked. They wanted me to fight someone ranked last fight. I was supposed to fight Luis Smolka. Um, for me, I have a contract to fight a certain amount of fights, and I'm going to get paid a certain amount of money, whether I fight Luis Smolka – the dude I was supposed to fight, or I fight Peter Yan, the number one bantamweight in the UFC. Mm. I get paid the same. I'm going to fight this dude. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to fight this dude on a Conor McGregor pay-per-view. Because you just keep getting better, too. I just keep getting better. I'm going to keep improving. The, like, Chael, Chael Sennon always says it, fight the worst dude on the highest paper, on the highest part of the card. Mm. A, lot of, a lot of bantamweights and just people in the UFC, they definitely hate, and it comes from jealousy. Like I'm getting way more eyeballs than them for whatever I'm, I'm per performing there, dude. You go and watch some of, some of these guys perform. You literally pick up your phone and start surfing. In. You're just not. You don't give a fuck mm. what they're doing. I, I'm fighting. You're fucking. I had Beeb standing up in the fucking cage. Like I watch my fight back all the time. Uh, it was sweet to see uh, in at the end of my fight, like the last thirty seconds, Bieber was standing up watching. Right. I'm like, that's fucking entertainment. That's what I do. That's why I get paid what I get paid. That's why I'm on the, these in the in this position. Right. It, it ultimately comes down to my performances, but the branding shit matters too. Because like you, you, you kind of feel for some of the dudes who are like Brazilian or whatever, where it's just going to be so much harder for them to really like form a bond with the audience because they don't speak English that well or, or whatever. You know, and some fighters just aren't really as spectacular. You know, and they don't care to be. Some fighters mm. don't care. They just they literally just want to fucking fight. They just want to train, fight. They don't really give a fuck about interviews. Mm. But, I mean, that you're not going to get paid. You're not going to make as much. You're not going to be able to sell merch. You're not going to be able to, you know, you're not going to be able to stream on Twitch and have people that give a fuck about what you're doing outside the UFC or even in the UFC. Some Like, there's plenty of people in the UFC that don't, no one really gives a fuck about. Mm. So, I, but for me going, before I even got into the UFC, I wanted to be an entertainer. Yeah. So, I fucking, I'll eat it all up. It's interesting when you say uh, that the UFC's 
fifty-one percent of a uh, entertainment company and forty-nine percent like an athletic organization. Because I've always respected that so much about Dana that there's been like so many like easy routes that he could have took towards like making huge fights happen mm-hmm. in the UFC over the years. And yeah, there's definitely been people that he sort of like fast. I'm talking about Brock Lesnar. They fast tracks yeah. into a position to get a title fight and shit. But for the most part, I feel like they exercise like pretty amazing discretion at treating the fights like a serious thing and not you know wanting to just put like some fucking monster against some pussy ass dude so he's just going to get the the crazy knockout or yeah. whatever like the easy route would be it feels yeah. like they more often than not don't take that i agree no i agree i think yeah they make they make good fucking fights dana's a smart 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 motherfucker and they know mm. exactly what they're doing they have their matchmakers uh sean shelby mick maynard like the ufc is obviously knows what the fuck they're doing mm. they're a billion dollar company but then it's it's super fascinating to see the rise of like youtube boxing where it's the <laughs> total opposite dynamic of let's put together some fights that are going to get a shitload of eyeballs and who gives a fuck about like who's the best or, or treating it like something that needs to have integrity they're kind of showing that like the total opposite approach is also viable yeah 100 percent. i there's less fights you can make that route though because mm. we're are you invested in and were you invested in the Jake Paul Ben Ashker fight? Were you? Did you watch? I watched it, but I, you know, I, I'm friends with Jake. I really thought he was going to get his ass beat when he didn't. I was, you know, happy for him, but you know, I'm, I don't really like. I didn't feel that invested in yeah. it per se. Are you watching Jake versus Tyron? Tyrone, I'll, Tyron. I'll definitely watch that. Yeah, to be yeah. honest, I probably tuned into pretty much all of these like influencer See, fights for me. Like those fights, like with Jake versus Ben, I was so much more interested and intrigued than. 99% of the UFC fights like mm-hmm. I'd rather unless it's a Connor fight like a Diaz fight unless it's a huge fight or it's one of my buddies I don't really watch the UFC too much like I'm mm-hmm. not I don't get too excited I mean same with Bellator like I, I like watching exciting fights that are that are I'm like interested in like what the fuck mm-hmm. and and even Logan versus Floyd I was sitting on my fucking chair like <laughs> sweating like what the fuck this is crazy yeah uh jake versus ben jake versus tyron i'm gonna go to that it's gonna be fucking sweet mm. for whatever reason i'm just super entertained by those and i love how much shit jake talks yeah because it's like you it, it makes it, that fight so much more interesting yeah from your perspective as somebody who's obviously got a lot of experience with striking and stuff how do you feel when you watch jake paul do you feel like he really is getting like to be that good like we, we it's kind of like our perspective of him is colored by the fact that we haven't seen him take an l so we're all kind of like fuck this guy's dope but a lot yeah. of us aren't necessarily experts yeah, yeah no jake I'm, I'm definitely buddies with jake i i wish i could watch him spar mm. against a professional boxer that i knew and could and could get a really good idea of his skill level Going into the Ben Askren fight, I'm like, I know for a fact Ben Askren can't box. Mm. Like, you just look at him hit mitts, you look at him, he's just never been a boxer, he's a wrestler. So when he knocked out Ben, I was like, okay, that just proves to me that Jake can box and Ben Askren can't fucking box. Mm. This fight, Jake versus Woodley, will prove a lot. Woodley can fucking box. Mm. He's not a high-level black belt boxer. He's, he's a wrestler that knows how to box, and he's knocked people out in the UFC, so I think this fight will definitely prove if Jake... Uh, Jake's improving a lot. He's a young kid. He's athletic. He's taking it fucking serious, mm. and he's, he's improving a lot, so I'm excited to see this fight and how it, how it goes down. Obviously, like, your career path is already, like, pretty set out in front of you. Like, you know what you're trying to do. You want to be a UFC champion, but... If you maybe were at a different point in your career, could you see yourself being interested in, in doing those kind of influencer fights where maybe the bag is 10 times oh, bigger, fuck yeah. but then it's you're not fighting like the top level competition? Yeah, you know? That's a good question. That, yeah, that, I mean, that I have a couple fights on my contract left in the UFC. I plan on staying with the UFC. They've not been nothing but good for me, but we'll see what we'll, if there's 10, 20 million dollar bags out there being offered. You know, we'll see. Mm. UFC don't pay you like that. They right. just don't. Eventually, I'll get to a point where I'm con- Connor level and I can make that money. But, dude, I gotta. I have to go. I have to become champion. I have to defend the belt, probably move up. You know, I have to do, win some big fucking fights to make that kind of money. Right. But also with winning winning the fights, like even just winning that last fight, that makes the merch go up. It makes all mm. the sponsor money go up. So I am making good money from the UFC because I, they give me that platform to be able to get the, all the eyeballs for everything else. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. And, but if, if you want to make million, it's in boxing right now. Mm. It, it's in boxing. Did you see uh, Bryce Hall versus Austin McBroom? 
I, I, yeah, I watched that. I didn't watch it live. Fuck, what was I doing? I don't even remember what I was doing. I, I Was there another fight on that night or something? But yeah, I, I, I think that was a UFC I fight think, that I think night, it was wasn't there? But I went back and rewatched it. Um, Austin looked pretty good. Yeah. Right? It, it's funny, dude. It's so funny how delusional, not those two in particular, just delusional males are when it comes to fighting. Mm. If they've never been, if they've never had their ass whooped before, they think that, they think fighting something totally different. They have this this completely made up story in their head that they think they can whoop someone's ass. Right. And then it com- comes into it, and you twenty seconds into a fight, and you're fucking gassed out. That's the one thing that so many dudes will just allow themselves to be fucking deluded about. They'll just tell themselves lies about like, oh, if so and so did this, I would fuck him up. And it's like. <laughs> You know, it doesn't seem like there's any attempt to sort of tether that to reality, which is fascinating. And I probably, I probably do it too. I probably sat there and told my girl, like, if that fucking dude sits yeah. on me, I'll beat his. No actual consideration yeah. of how I would do in that fight. Right. How you know? would you do? Yeah, that's funny. I, I, I see that all the time, dude. People talking shit. Even like, it's like, how would you, if someone says, I'll, I'll, a lot of people say too, like, I'll just black out and beat his ass. But like, how would you beat his ass? Like, what would you hmm. do? And blacking and like, out is probably not a great... Definitely not a good <laughs> idea. Like, for me, if I'm fighting somebody, I would rather them be very upset, angry, emotional, wanting them to fight me. That's what Connor did so well, especially with Jose Aldo. Got him so aggressive, so mad, so angry. You make some mistake. Fucking mm. gat... You it, you know, that taps your your uh, your cardio, too. Cardio is king in this sport. Dude. Mm. You have to have good cardio. You can be as skilled as you want in the first round, but you gas out in the second round, your, your skills aren't there, and your cardio is... I mean, if your cardio's not there, your skills are going to drop, 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 drop. So cardio's fucking king in this sport. Um, and that's another thing people don't even think about. Like, mm. random people that'll get in a street fight or something. Like, dude, you'll be gassed out. Heart rate 200 on your knees in, in a minute. What would it take to make you get in a street fight at this point? Knowing um, that it's probably a, a pretty, pretty, pretty bad question. career move. Yeah, but, no, very uh, bad. Uh, you also know that you're very capable. <laughs> what would it take? Someone trying to jack my watch. Disrespect you in front of your kid. Yeah. That's got to be one. Elena, like, she's so young. I feel like someone that I would look at whoever's disrespecting me in front of my kid. Like, I would look at him as just like, you're retarded. Like, yeah. what do you do? Like, I, I, it, t- it would take a lot for me to actually physically want to do anything to someone just because I, I don't know. I just would look at that person as like so stupid mm. i don't know i i, I wouldn't i definitely wouldn't want to hurt anybody in the streets if i did get in a street fight i'd probably teep kick that little sternum kick i'd throw mm. right to their sternum and it'd probably make them fold over yeah uh, but and i you definitely got that wouldn't at your disposal it's, it's nice it's yeah, a nice it's a way nice, to take care it's of it a from nice a fucking, <laughs> yeah long kick doesn't hurt his face i don't want to kill anybody mm. um but yeah a street fight I, I can't see myself getting in one i got a friend of mine who is you know regular guy but takes a lot of pride in knocking motherfuckers out and i've seen him knock a lot of fucking people out throughout my life including like me looking out the window of my house and seeing like a 40 year old dude laid out in the street because he almost hit him on his with his car riding his bike and my homie just boom and just fucking knocks him out in the street but he was telling me a story and this is like i've never heard i've never heard a story that basically was like him getting disrespected and then just letting it go Mm -hmm. and he told me that he was like at the beach and this dude who was like clearly a gangbanger like came up to him while he was with his like four-year-old and fully tried to punk him like i I forget exactly what he said or did but he told me he's like yeah i just walked away like i'm not gonna fucking get clapped in front of my kid i'm not gonna like let this the situation just seems so obviously bad that he turned his pride off for once in his fucking life and just let it go. And I was like, I'm kind of proud Dude, of you. Dude, yeah, that's, that's the bigger man right there. That's the bigger person being able to walk away. Mm. That's a skill too. Fucking yeah. being able to just, you know, you, your ego, you want to fucking, if, especially if you knock people out any, and you know you can knock people out, mm. to be able to go, all right, I'm, we're not going to fucking, it's a good skill to have. But like when you're out of like the club or the bar and like you're surrounded by other professional fighters, does it feel like the, the odds of anyone getting into a fight are like extremely low or kind of higher? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't, I've never really partied with a bunch of fighters. Mm. Um, keep my circle real small for the most part. Uh, Every time I've been drunk, dude, I just want to fucking dance. <laughs> Call it dancing. I don't know. Wiggle mostly. Uh, just fucking stumble around drunk. Just I, I like going up to everybody. Just you having a good time? Just fucking screaming. Right. Just 
I'm a happy, happy fucking drunk. So I don't even think about fighting or think about if I'm in danger. I'm sure if something happened, I need to fucking bust someone up real quick. I'd be able to. Right. I've, but I've never even, when I'm drunk, dude, I'm just making sure everyone's having a good fucking time. Yeah. No, that's definitely. You uh, drink much? Uh, I used to drink a lot and like do drugs and shit. But now at this, I, I haven't really been drunk in probably like three years. Damn, really? You three know? years. That's, dude, fuck. Because if you, yeah. What, what was the craziest drugs you done? The meth. Meth. Dude, I feel like. <laughs> Just one time, this girl, we were already drunk as fuck. And she's like, you want to do this? I'm I'd like, have probably done it too. I Shit, thought it was yeah. Molly. And then she's like, no, it's, I forget what she called it. But she's like, it'll make sex really amazing. That's all I had to hear. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, no. let's go. Yeah. That have fucking got me in there too. She wasn't lying either. Was it crazy? And we were up for, like, my, my homie, I had to, like, host this BMX contest, uh-huh. like, yelling over the, the megaphone or whatever at, like, 10 in the morning. And oh, me and her, like, get home and start fucking. And my homie, like, banged on my door. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo like, I'm going to go to sleep for a little bit and I'll be good. He's like, bro, it's 930. Oh, and shit. And I had just been completely, like, in the zone fucking that whole night with no clue how much time had past dude that's when i really realized how dangerous of a drug that might have been yeah that's that's pure just being in the moment though it's crazy how some drugs just put you in the moment drugs are fucking fun but they're dangerous and what i've what i've kind of like you do drugs and you have all those happy times Mm. i feel like with those come like the like depressive like you have those ups and then after you gotta have those downs Mm. that's just how the fucking world works so at least mine those ups and downs but like when i get those training highs after jujitsu after a hard workout like i have those highs but after it's more of those like it's more peaceful Mm. so it's like a different high it's a similar high but without a come down Uh, my favorite thing about jujitsu when i was doing it was just that that feeling of leaving the gym and literally every single part of your body is just lit the fuck Mm. up did you gi yeah just pure soreness just like radiating out mm. of me and I would have to just go home and like lay down at like 7 p.m. and just dude, not be able to best? do any. It was the best. It really I miss is. that shit. Just peace, dude. I swear to God. I have a cold plunge at home. This mm. dope ass. I, fuck, what's and that it That makes called? a big difference? I do it 100%. I think, because I do it every night. It, it, it's, uh, I do three minutes every night. It, when I'm in camp, I'll, the water will be 38, 39 degrees. When I'm out of camp, I'll have it like 47, 48, 49. It's just a little bit more easy to get in and sit for three minutes. But dude, after a hard jujitsu and your hands hurt and your everything aches, and you lay in that thing and get out. My sleep, I track my sleep every night too. My sleep is w- way better, dude. Way fucking mm. better. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, when I think about partying and stuff, it's like, it was it was great for all those years. But then I just started to hit this point where I would just get fucking hung over for like a day and a half, and that Not was when it. I was just like, dude, fuck this shit. Because yeah. I used to be out like fucking drinking like crazy, doing coke, and then we would wake up at ten in the morning and go ride bikes for like ten fucking hours <laughs> in the van, and it just didn't really affect me. And then like you know, I'm 37 now. I mean, that just at a certain point just started to really yeah. fuck me up. I think part. I think I enjoy the partying so much after a fight because I'm celebrating. Mm. It's like okay, I fucking just. Did what I did. I won. It was a hard, a lot of hard work. And now I can let loose. I can just not give a fuck for a little bit. Mm. So when I go out, I just fucking can. I just like to go out and go hard. Now, we're, like, we're in L.A. this weekend. I, I brought my baby and, and Danny. We're here, so I'm definitely not going out. Mm. But uh, it's good to have the... Because if I have the baby around, it's like, obviously, I'm not going to fucking go out and party. So it's nice. But when I'm out in Miami by myself... <laughs> shit's fun <laughs> yeah, I, I still haven't even like gone out and like really partied since i had the kid which is something that i'm like kind of looking forward to but also like kind of it just feels weird like a different level of pressure like fucking, a little bit uh-huh. you know i just like because i know my kid's waking me up at like six in the morning dude shit up she do oh, isn't that the best though the waking up because oh, yeah. usually pretty much every morning elena wakes up at 6 37 so after whatever time she wakes up wakes me up i take elena out take her outside change her diaper whatever and danny gets to sleep for a couple extra hours mm. because elena will wake up in the middle of the night and want boobs and right. danny's sleep gets interrupted so it's the same thing i bring dude. her in the garage while i'm working out in the morning and the shit. mornings are the yeah. best aren't they with them yeah they're just fucking fun you got a little uh you lift weights in your garage yeah nice but uh i, I bring my kid out and put her in her little thing and she just sort of like wanders around kicks just it observes it's crazy yeah. they're just constantly their eyes are so big just looking at shit it's fucking i trippy. still lie to myself every day like if i have to work out at eight and i'm like setting my alarm for 7 30 and just knowing that there's no way i'm sleeping till 7 30 oh, you wish huh <laughs> i know it seems like a great idea but it's not very realistic i know especially once they're up they're up it's not like i just go back to sleep it's like no you're fucking up they're pulling my hair or yeah. she's pulling my hair oh god you having long hair that must dude, be the worst I, dude on the plane here 
I fell asleep like on Danny's lap and Elena was sleeping and like right when I was about to fall asleep, <laughs> she just fucking yanks it. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, you're fucking cute, but. Yeah. Like anyone else on earth, if they were to like wake me up unnecessarily <laughs> in the morning, I would be like, what the fuck are oh, you? Yeah. Like, I, I want to kill you. Get the fuck away from me. But then with a kid, it's like they, they're waking you up, but they're just radiating cuteness at you. Dude, it's you can't do anything but just be like, ah, all right. Yeah, yeah. four hours sleep. Fuck it. <sighs> what time do you usually go to bed? Usually I, go, I try to go to bed like midnight and then wake up. What do you do? At, what do you do so late? Like from like from like nine to midnight, what are you doing? I mean, usually I'm like here until like eight. So I get home like eight, nine. And I try to just like really just like zone the fuck out and just watch whatever I'm watching on YouTube. Usually like poker tournaments or a lot of times I have to get ready for interviews. So it's like I'll do six hours of interviews here and then I go home and I'm like post up on the couch, roll a blunt. And it's like I'm immediately back into watching other interviews oh, to get ready to for my interview views which sometimes that's when it really feels like i'm burning the candle at both ends like i can't have my mind thinking about interviewing all day and then preparing for the more, more interviews after that but that's actually what i'm doing and i just it's, it's, it's not that bad <laughs> i was just trying to like think like you know could like, be working construction then i have to <laughs> i have to then think about the money to like remind myself like yeah this is not like a normal amount of money like i asked my mom this morning when i saw her i was like how broke were we when we were kids and she confirmed that we were really, really broke. So that like that kind of thing like really grounds me to like not take anything for granted. Dude, you know? fuck yeah! Especially being able to podcast. It's like, dude, you see people waking up seven a.m. going to construction exactly. jobs for eight, nine, ten hours. You drive past them on the road. And I'm just like, fuck, dude. If I ever bitch about anything, I'm the biggest pussy in the fucking world because my life is so fucking easy compared to. 99% of people. I think about that all the time. That like most people are stuck working a lot for an amount of money they're not happy with and they don't like what they're doing. It's like, yeah, I'm working a lot, but I'm being rewarded well, building something, and I'm actually really passionate about it. So yeah. I just like always try to bring myself back to reality yeah. anytime I'm feeling like pushed yeah. over the edge. It needs you know? to be like a daily reminder too. Yeah. Because you can go fucking wild without thinking like that. It's important. I feel like it's important to think like that, to have those fucking thoughts. Be like, oh shit. Life's pretty good. There's a lot of other people that would literally change their life to live my life. Mm -hmm. But it's like a good reminder daily to to uh, just be grateful, huh? Yeah, because, I mean, I see rappers all the time who might, you know, like cancel the show where they're supposed to be getting paid 50 grand and they just don't feel like it. Or they're like, you know, like they, they cancel <laughs> the show and it's like. I mean that that to me is like I never want to like start thinking that fifty thousand is not right. worth going hard for yeah. even if I've got a lot of money in the bank. Like you just to me that's like a a place I just like never want to yeah. get to. You know? Yeah, dude. Perform rappers are so lucky that how they can <laughs> perform, dude. Because for me, I like I said, I love performing. I love entertaining. I can only do it three, four times a year, max four right. times a year. Like I probably won't fight more than four. Three seems to like three was last year. I'll probably have three this year. Like three seems to be the but dude, these guys can go perform on Rolling Loud, and then go fucking perform next the next weekend somewhere else. Like mm -hmm. that's so fucking sweet. It's fun watching people perform that enjoy performing. It's yeah. fucking sweet. But it's weird too because it's like the performing is like the immediate way to get paid. But then in reality, like staying home and being in the studio and just recording all the time is like that's like yeah. a completely separate like side hustle, and you have to be managing both of those things at the same Dude. time, and it's really hard. Like, I, there, but there's been some people who've had creative solutions. Like, I was thinking of Lil Wayne, who had two tour buses, one to sleep on and one to record on Damn. while he was on the road. Which I was that's like, gangster. that's <laughs> that's some rich one shit to right sleep, there. One to record. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, mm. that creative process for musicians and rappers is so crazy. Mm. I would love to go on tour with someone. And just see, like, because they go, they'll fucking perform in this state, and then the next night they'll be in another state, right? Yeah. Just taking jets, fucking places. It's weird because the only times I've ever been on tour with rappers was like in a 15 passenger van, like people basically like sleeping on each other, like little pumps fucking head on my shoulders, <laughs> sleeping and shit. And like when I think about, when I see like rappers who are like really on some rich shit, taking private jets or having oh, like shit. super nice buses and shit, I'm like, that seems pretty dope. Dude, it seems fuck like it would be yeah. easy. <laughs> that seems so sweet. Yeah, yeah. I would love to go on go on a tour with people, just fucking follow them and watch what they do. Mm. I think when me and Tom first, he was living with me when we first, I think we were watching Lil Pump in your vlogs. I think that's when we Back first, like, day. was that five years ago? Yeah. Four or five years ago? Whatever there was, was a while where like people would just on the street be like, you're Lil Pump's friend. <laughs> like like little before pump. I had the whole no jumper identity fully built out, uh -huh. I was a little pumps for little him pumps for a while. Friend. That was cool. How's he? 
If just a normal little dude? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. He's How just, tall is he? 5'4", five, 5'5"? Five, five? He's a little guy. A little guy? And he probably could have been a bigger guy if he didn't do all those drugs when he was a little kid. God, because he's still fucking <laughs> young, right? <laughs> yeah. 20-something? I always just wonder that. Like, if fucking... If we grew to grow in a couple inches. <laughs> you know, like, sometimes I see these dudes, and I'm like, would they have been bigger if they weren't popping all these Zans when they were little kids? Dude, God. that Yeah, that's fuck sad. Yeah. Or va- you vape? You, hit your, you have a vape or no? I smoke blunts and eat edibles, yeah. actually. Shout out to these 2020 future strips. We got to gift you some of these because these things, yeah. before your next camp, you got to make sure you experiment with these and let us know how they go. Dude, 100%. I, usually for, for uh, weed in camp, I usually cut about 14 days out. Oh, that's um, all you need. To yeah, well, well, now in Vegas, I could I could smoke the day before the fight. They really? said just don't show up high. They, that's they're completely new, new now. But for me, that two weeks just cutting it out i feel way more clear-headed and uh every time i cut every time i do like a a weed break i always feel so fucking good oh, yeah. i'm like clear-headed everything feels good and then i take one puff and i'm like oh yeah that's what I smoke. <laughs> like it's fucking it's so yeah. hard not to and it's like what is what's the what's the negative effects nothing really all right yeah it's like you wake up a little groggy to. dude edibles i wake up groggy yeah. like a motherfucker or if i smoke too close to bed like i've gotten really really fucking good at not smoking too close to bed and really? it's kind of hard that's bad i think well i track my sleep and i've 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 been tracking my sleep for like three years with the uh the, you have the or bracelet or, oh use the ring okay, yeah, yeah so it's like i notice my sleep difference dude if i smoke right before bed i just get super fucking dry um my REM sleep's not as good mm. um if i smoke if i'm going to bed at 10 30 i smoke at seven and that high pretty much wears off by the time I go to sleep. Mm. I sleep way fucking better, dude. Just according to my ring, I feel better too. But it's hard not to fucking take a rip before bed. I just right. get blasted off laying in bed and fucking just spin. Yeah, I fall asleep like immediately. <laughs> and I don't dream, which is the weird part about weed, is that for yeah. the past like 10, 12 years that I've been like a daily weed smoker, mm-hmm. I just don't really have dreams. And then, but recently, like I got COVID, so that made me not sleep for a, or not smoke for a week. And then when I started smoking again, we did like this all day live stream where we listen to people's music on stream for donations and probably smoked like four blunts and my fucking throat was so swollen and fucked up from it. I think I just like dove into it too fast. And those were like two weeks where I wasn't smoking and it just really, really like I started having weird dreams, freaky shit started happening in my brain. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we we did trip. Uh, for me, like, cause I don't, I try to keep my lungs as healthy as possible. I have a really nice vaporizer, the volcano. Do you mm. know what the volcano is? Yeah, but is that, that's a concern is that you think it might affect your cardio a bit? Yeah, I, I think so a little bit. I have asthma too a little bit, so I can feel it. Like last night we were smoking joints, and like I woke up and I could just like I could feel it. So for the most part, I'm I mean even even a clean dab at a good temperature mm. won't fuck me up. The, the a clean dab um, and uh, the vaporizer doesn't really fuck me up. Edibles obviously don't fuck me up, but dude, smoke like a bong, mm. bong pipes, joints, blunts, f- fuck me up a little bit, but. I remember one of the Diaz brothers, uh, when you said the thing about don't show up high, that like his his drug yeah. test like said that he basically was high as fuck was for the fight. It was when he submitted Takanori Gomi, I'm pretty sure it was Nick Diaz. They said they, his THC levels were so fucking high that he had to be like smoking in the locker room. Yeah. But those dudes, dude, those That's dudes could fucking fight high. Oh, those yeah. are some real gangsters 100%. right there. I wouldn't want to <laughs> fight high. Like, I'm like... I just couldn't do it. Some people could. Tom, you probably fucking could. He's, he likes Chief. Nick, Nate obviously could. You use jujitsu high though? Oh, yeah. I dude, jujitsu high. I always hear that. Fun, That's a big part bro. of the culture. Oh, right? my God, dude. Jujitsu fucking stoned is so much fun. It's probably one of, dude, it, it's got to be up there with like partying hard. It's like that level of fun doing jujitsu stoned. Right. It's so much fun with you, some good tunes. Oh, shit. A couple of years ago, I was supposed to interview those two because uh, they were like coming into my store a lot and shit. And, uh, we had the interview lined up and I actually spent like a whole weekend just, I fucking got UFC fight pass, which I had to get again for this interview. <laughs> uh, but they fucking like, I was just rewatching all their shit. And like, you know, I, I was actually talking to some of my friends who were in the store with them. And they said that they're just like in a constant state of like, shadow boxing, sort of like getting it in with each other and shit. And there was actually like some gangster dude who was at the store, like who kind of tried to like, press the press an issue like with the fucking cashier like kind of trying to like punk him like acting like uh-huh. he should get clothes for free or some shit and he told me later that like he could see one of the gangster dudes homies like basically like warning like being like don't 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 try to be tough right now like, they're <laughs> professional ufc fighters like advice. they will fuck you up they're crazy dude yeah i mean it's crazy if you don't know what people are capable of yeah like if you look at those guys you 
you might think they're they're gangsters. You might think they're badass. They'll fight, but, but they, they got the look in their face like up. they will like they, they like look a little. They know too. You know? They know. Yeah, you look into their eyes. Okay, they know some shit that I don't know. Yeah. No, they're fucking. Yeah, Nick and Nate. Dude, Nick's fighting again. How crazy know, is that? So sick. I'm so curious because. Do you follow if you see him on Instagram like even two, three, four years ago? He just looks like he's in Vegas partying mm. all the time. Like yeah. that's what I got from it, from his like couple of, uh, Instagram stories and shit. Um, so fucking curious how that fight plays out against Robbie Lawler because they fought. How long ago was oh, that? That's what who they, he's fighting too. Yeah. What did they say that was tw- twelve years ago, eleven years ago they fought. Wow. And now they're fighting again. Nick hasn't fought in five years. I'm so that fight's gonna be crazy. Yeah. So you are a fan. Dude, a little bit. That's, but that's a big fight. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's a, a big, big one, fight. Yeah. That's on a Nick Diaz returns after five years. Uh, I'll definitely watch that. But like, I think there's fights this weekend that I fucking don't know who's on the card. Right. Like, I don't. I definitely ain't watching to, to what's say Friday tomorrow. I um, could definitely watch every card and enjoy it, but some it just feels to me like is this the best use of my like four hours mm-hmm. tonight when I'm with my girl yeah. and I know she's not exactly dying to watch this, yeah. so I kind of like hold off. What on do you it. Guys, what do you and your girl do for for fun? Do you guys like watch? Do you guys have a a Netflix show you guys like to watch, or what do you do at night? We're always like rotating between different shows. Although right now she's in like season six of Grey's Anatomy, so I'm not <laughs> watching that shit. I haven't and seen so that she kind of like leaves me at some point at night and just goes and watches that in the room. Dude, fuck yeah! What have you been watching? Just or pre- just usually preparing for. Uh, yeah. Who who, who who do you have next? Do you know who you have next, or do you have who, people look it up? Or yeah, I always have a fucking schedule that's like slowly in a state of being built up. Like, but they're probably all rappers that you haven't heard of. I got these two uh, uh, LA rappers: this dude Wale, the Sensei, and then this dude Jap Five. There's a rapper from back in the day named Lil Mouse who like disappeared for a long ass time, and I got him on Monday. Do you just so. hit him up on Insta? Um, or a little bit of both. They hit you up. Oh, actually, I really have to tell them that that Monday interview is not happening because I have to do this poker tournament. But, you know. Uh, Damn. That's sweet, though. You interview, like, guys that – so they're just, like, coming up, maybe, potentially? They a, could. a lot of them. That's kind of, like, with No Jumper, one of the main things I realized that was kind of crazy for me early on is, like, people want to know about rappers even before – they they're some up. big ass star That's because sweet. it's like they're they're just interesting personalities and characters and shit. So like for me, at least in terms of like LA dudes who are really from the hood, like I like to just try to interview dudes like super early because I'm just interested in getting to know them. And then like I feel like the audience appreciates like the biggest successes that I've ever had with the podcast are usually just getting somebody who ended up being a huge star, but I got them like really early Damn. at a time where they were just raw as fuck and just that is not. Because once they're like really rich and famous, then they kind of get media trained. They realize, oh, I don't really have a ton to gain from going on this podcast and just talking all this crazy shit, you know? Yeah, no, that's fucking, that's way cool. How long have you been on YouTube? 20. Well, 2012, I started doing BMX shit on uh, on on YouTube, and then 2015, 2016 was when we started No Jumper. So damn, that's like that's that's grinding though. You've been grinding because you have fucking fat subs too. Yeah. Like, you've been grinding. Almost four million so, like and subscribe. All you fucking subscribe UFC cock-suckers. fans who have not subscribed yet. Oh, they'll watch. They'll subscribe. You know what to do, dude. That's fucking sweet though. Been grinding on YouTube. That's so cool that you can make money off like social media shit like this. It's so it still blows my fucking mind, dude. Still like because even even like. When I was in high school, it wasn't like, oh, I could make money off YouTube. Like, it just didn't seem, that wasn't even an option. It was like, what are you going to do for work? So it's crazy right now. You can make money doing all this That's shit. one of the things I love the most is like seeing these dudes who are like kind of like the new generation of YouTubers where I know that they would literally be like a drug dealer or robbing people yeah. or whatever. And they figured out at a certain point, like, oh, I can make a YouTube video and make a couple hundred bucks. And just sitting in my house or, or like, you know, same thing yeah. with a lot of Twitch streamers and stuff. Like I know so many people that this is really like their alternative to being in the streets. Dude, and that's using, pretty amazing to me. Yeah. Using their creativity, their energy towards making videos or thinking about what can I make a new video for instead of selling drugs, doing fucking robbing, doing whatever. Taking risks, you know, because a lot of dudes are doing that to they're taking those kind of risks. To basically be able to take care of their kids, but yeah. you're taking a risk that you're not going to be there for a big chunk of your kid's upbringing, you know? Yeah, 100%. No, it's, we're, we're fucking lucky to be in 2021 living this crazy-ass fucking life. It's true. Um, okay, so you're going back home after this, and uh, what, what does the game plan look like? For LA, yeah, tonight I'm going to hang out with uh, my buddy Dingo, because I just signed with Monster, so he, oh, he nice. lives out here. He's uh, 
he's gonna take us to the monster office or some shit, and then he's gonna take us to Nobu, oh, yeah. Malibu dinner tonight. Gotta hit Nobu. That's Is a, he a fire? Very important part of just LA culture in general. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go. That's out like there. the nice restaurant that you gotta like take a girl to or, or a couple. You gotta just see a bunch of celebrities there or whatever. You know. Oh, there's some, okay. Damn, that'll be sweet. Yeah, oh, you'll, gonna, you'll see famous people there for sure. Is that so that's right on the beach, right? Yeah, up in Malibu. Is uh, is there like what? How's the beach? Um, because right now obviously LA might be shut down again or whatever. Mm. Is there still like a ton of chicks on the beach, or is it like kind of calmed down because not as many people are visiting, or what's the chick situation like? If you if you survey a large percentage of the beach in Malibu, you're definitely gonna see some chicks. I don't know what beach you would would be the best beach to, to go pick to. up a chick. For I me and my know. girl. What if me and my girl want to pick up a chick? Where, where should we go in LA? Probably like some sort of bordello and just find yourself a prostitute. But you know, Okay, because I brought, I brought a babysitter tonight. So, <laughs> oh, that's uh, what she's operating at? Yeah, she's my babysitter. No, uh, yeah, so we'll, go, we'll have to go check out uh, some prostitutes. That's tight. You, <laughs> you think that that like, bonding experience of fucking a girl with your girl brings you closer together? I think so, for sure. We've Yeah, we've been together for about seven, eight years. And we've had definitely had uh, a couple threesomes. There's, dude, it's just fun. Just like... Uh, I think it brings us closer together for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of trust right there. A lot of trust. Yeah, definitely a lot of trust. Um, just the new experience, especially for Danny, just fucking being with a girl. She enjoys it. She likes it. She fucking, it's fun for her. It's fun for me. Uh, but yeah, what's our chances picking up a chick in LA tonight? Man, I just don't know where to go. Where I know. I it's you to it's go? crazy out here. I feel like it's, it's not as clubs popping. And shit, clubs, I yeah. I know. It's like if I told Danny, I'm like, I'm not going to drink. We're not drinking tonight or uh, this trip. Like, I'm not. I'm going to be sober this trip, but might have to Saturday night. Got a babysitter. Might have to go find a little mamacita. <laughs> <laughs> might have to. Damn. Uh, that sucks. Like, a lot, like the porn star girls I know, I feel like if I told them, like, hey, holler at this rapper friend of mine that... Holler at this UFC fighter for mine. Call me a rapper, they might like it. Oh more. yeah, yeah. You're basically <laughs> a rapper, dude. I, I I need to get on something. I wish, do someday I'm gonna be on something. I don't want to be like Tyron Woodley though, and just get made fun. Have you listened to his? Oh, he God. just gets made fun no, of I so heard bad. It, but <laughs> it's I don't want to be that. I mean, most most athletes throughout the years have, and also yeah, shout out to this fly that is totally <laughs> yeah. like making us. Fall so you, you got the reflexes. You, you, you almost you, got it. You I read saw that it book in before? your hand. Mastery? Yeah. Good ass book. Classic. Yeah. But what were you saying? Uh, most ra- uh, uh, athletes that tried rap and suck. Very basically. few <laughs> athletes that people have seemed willing to take serious as rappers. Yeah. Well, there's a couple couple of those dudes in the NBA that are fucking got some sweet shit. Who is These it? These days? L- L- okay. Do you know who I'm talking about? I feel like Lillard. I'm Lillard. thinking about like Shaq. Shaq's career was huh? pretty Wait, wack. what did you say? He got some fire shit, right? A couple. Oh, really? Okay. I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, he's got some sweet shit, but Shaq, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, it's probably not realistic, but you never know. Yeah, they're probably out there. If, if I can just scream some shit, like a five second scream thing, we see it. If you want to like think about an easy way that you could fit into a rap song, like there's a Skepta song and ASAP Bari, who's not a rapper, he did the chorus on the song and he just literally said. It ain't safe on the block, not even for the cops. And they sampled that. They made it the hook of the song. It's a very dope song. And it, like, gave him a chance to basically Damn. rap the hook of the song without actually really rapping. That's sweet. I always felt like that was... So there's opportunity. There's potential. So you're yeah. saying I got a chance. Or you could hop on an intro, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say, like, kill a perfect uh, post fight. Mm. And then they'll pull, throw it on a song. Didn't they? someone do that with Connor? When Connor did something on a, one of the uh, post fight mm. interviews, he said something fucking funny. I think someone, uh, someone threw it on his song. But yeah. Do you think Connor's done? Dude, he's, he hasn't won since for like five years. I still think he's super fucking good. Obviously, he's a very high level. Mm. But who do you give him next? Everyone in the top 10 is a dangerous fucking fight. Like, I just don't know who he would fight next. He has to win his next fight. Yeah. He can't fucking lose his next fight. When will he fight again? Honestly, probably not for another 12 months ish. That's a pretty serious fucking surgery he had. Yeah. And then the crazy thing is, like, I don't think Connor really wants to be, like, you know, number five in no, the world. Like, no. he doesn't want to be, like, in the top ten. He wants to be number one. And if he's going to just be sort of, like, shrinking away from number one, I just it seems like it's not his personality to keep it going. Yeah, he's just so fucking rich right now. But even then, like, going into this last fight, that was what people were saying, like, is he too rich to fucking want it? And that seems like one of the most consistent things from watching UFC for like 10 years is that when, like Ronda, when she yeah. fucking got in a different place financially, it's like, boom, the losing streak just yeah. starts. It feels like that is just like so consistent in MMA. Unfortunately, my, yeah, it kind of is. I feel like with Ronda, I mean, as watching, I just never felt like her skills were super high level. I mm. thought she was just fighting 
people that sucked way worse this than is her. such an early days of that division of yeah. women in, in and MMA then in like she fought holly holm and amanda nunez like girls that could compete and she just kind of got exposed for a real skill level yeah. connor's good though he's like really actually good as fuck but every single fight he has has to be a mega fight mm. so he has to fight someone else that's a name a somewhat of a fucking name so it's it's tricky for him to get fights because whoever he fights, he's making famous as fuck mm-hmm. and like he's making them rich. So he's you know, all that goes into his mind, like who who am I gonna pick to potentially beat me mm-hmm. that I care about making rich? Like Dustin Poirier is a star now because Connor fought him twice but or you, three times. You mentioned moving up in weight at a certain point if you were yeah. to like dominate your own division. Yeah. Like that's always I was I would always think about that with Connor though. I'm like, bro, like don't move up in weight. Just keep mm. fighting in this division. Just have yeah. this ridiculous win streak. Weight cuts as bro. the champion. Oh, weight yeah, cuts want to get past motherfucker that, you know? dude. Like mm. cutting I'm probably I would weigh, weighed myself this morning I was one fifty seven point four or something and, and when I fight I'm weighing at one thirty six. Mm. Dude, and to get down to that literally takes fucking, I'd say six, five, six weeks of strict, like I do, I do eight weeks, but like strict, strict, strict diet mm. to get down to 140 or to 151, 150. And then from like fight week, I go from 150 to 136. So mostly water weight and shit. But dude, it fucks with you so bad. You literally are basically dying, <laughs> like fucking laying there, 137 pounds, one more pound left. I have to sit in this fucking tub. My heart feels like it's about to beat out of my chest, like just no fucking energy. So weight cut, like Connor moved up from 145 to 155. Dude, the weight cut just fucking sucks. Like eventually I'm going to move up to 145 and I'll probably put on a couple pounds and it'll still fucking suck. But mm. I, I definitely see myself going up 145 after I get the belt. But it's uh, it's a pretty crazy thing being a USC fighter because it's like I think that you have the skill set that one hundred percent of people respect. Yeah, you know, like yeah. the most gangster ass rapper dudes that I know. If they were in here and I said, "Yeah, he's he's this guy," and showed them a little bit of your highlight reel or whatever, it's like immediately they're going to be treating you like you're the fucking man, and that's got to feel pretty good because you're you're one of the best at the thing that every guy knows is at least a possibility for them when they leave the house. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I, I heard all rappers want to be fighters and fighters want to be rappers. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. but it is it is cool because I walk into if someone if if a group of people know who I am, they all treat me super like I don't know how to really get a good read off people mm. because everyone treats me like really really good which is sweet and i like obviously would rather people treat me like that than like shit but it's hard it's tricky you don't know you can't trust people because when they meet you it's like you're like god that guy's cool as fuck mm. but he could turn around and go be a complete douchebag to the waiter right like what the fuck that's so it, it is tricky i mean i'd rather have people respect me and do shit and be nice to me but it's hard to hard to know who's fucking cool or who's just fucking sucking my nuts like yeah you know what i mean but I definitely I, I relate to that because i feel like at a certain point i just realized like i have no ability to judge who's a nice person <laughs> or who i like because it's just like in the rap world at least or whatever it's just like a huge percentage of people just have every reason to suck my fucking yeah, dick and dude. it's just like I don't want to be around that energy no. like i don't want to be around no. fake people so it kind of makes me not want to be around to not like take people seriously even if they seem perfectly right. nice you dude know? it's a that's a real yeah real issue you keep your circle pretty small who you hang out with yeah i don't i ain't doing shit i'm like a weird ass hermit these days me too i feel like which is good for me be, when i'm at home and i'm smoking weed i feel like i'm anti-social i'm like i don't really want to go kick it with a bunch of people i don't really want to go do a bunch of shit um that's why i like weed so much too like when i'm back home if I smoke, I'm like, I can just chill at home tonight, watch fucking Netflix. Dude, I can just chill and no issues. Mm. But if I'm not smoking, my natural, like, I'm like, let's go do something. Let's go fucking, let's go to the park. Let's go do something, which isn't bad. But let's go hang out with people. Let's go go out to dinner, what all that shit. But smoking, I'm just like, I'm good with chilling. And mm. I think that's important for me to keep fucking grinding, just chill, be out at my house, fucking not being distracted by chicks and just fucking chilling. Because... Yeah, like I agree that it's good for you to like, you know, be uh, like take some time to party and stuff. But also like you kind of know that like, all right, let's say you win all your fights in the next three, four years and then you take a bad L. The first thing that your brain's going to be going to is like, I'm not partying. I'm fucking like yeah. just going to grind. Yeah. Like that's going to be the first thing yeah. to go from your schedule. But right. I mean, as long as you're young and shit too, it's like, I feel like there's, there's gotta be some value in not driving yourself crazy by just being a pure monk. Dude, a hundred. Yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, 
I, the thing about taking an L too is like I feel like I'm in a, in a spot in my mind where if I lost, it's like I, I could. My per, it's all about perspective. It's like, dude, like we were talking about earlier, I don't have to go to fucking construction nine mm. to five. Like, on my life still so fucking good mm. that losing's not that. It won't fuck with me. I don't think. Like some people think uh, it could. I don't know. I've never lost, but uh, the um, the confidence is a real thing. Some people lose and they don't have that confidence going into their next fight. They're like, fuck. Maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was, or who knows where Connor's confident is, confidence is now. It's like he was so confident over those mm-hmm. years because he kept knocking people out. He hasn't knocked anyone out since Cowboy Cerrone, who was on like a five fight losing streak. Um, so who knows where his mind's at? But yeah, uh, who, it's hard to say. It's hard to guess where someone's mind's at. But I feel like you're right though. Like I think you could handle a loss very well because it seems like you're. I think your mind state is like your biggest asset, to 100%. be honest. Like 100%. you just are, you're so calm. I even like, that's why I was asking about like your first UFC fight. Cause I could tell that you weren't as calm then. Mm-hmm. And like in comparison to your demeanor of like your most recent fights, it's just like, oh fuck. Like this is like a totally different person with a totally different level of confidence. Yeah. When I walk in that octagon, like obviously I'm fighting Chris Montoya, who it was a short, a latent, uh, late replacement, whatever. It didn't matter who it was. When I go into that cage, I feel like I'm the best in the world at 135 pounds. Like my skill set going into that cage, I'm like, there's, I'm going to beat whoever the fuck's in here. Mm. And it's a good confidence feeling. But it, it, yeah, like I said, it comes from those training camps, those eight weeks of complete mental discipline. It's not, you know, I don't party at all. Don't drink at all. It's train, sleep, recover, train, sleep. Like that's literally two months of fucking just pure discipline. But that's where you get that confidence from. Mm, for sure. Appreciate you coming through, man. Dude, yeah. I'm glad we, we were able to fucking set this up. It was super short notice. Yeah. I mean, I did like 13 interviews this week. Holy and then shit. I was like, bro, like if you're coming to town, boom, we, we, we got to schedule it. Fuck. I appreciate that. 13? <laughs> yeah. It's been, a, a f- it's been a rough week. Damn. Dude, no. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. The studio's fucking dope. Dude, this place is place is badass i trust that you're gonna fucking high kick that fly to death once we stand Dude, up. i know i'm about to fucking smack the wings <laughs> off this fucker <laughs> for sure man yeah i appreciate dude. it and i'm mega looking forward to your next fight december here, dude december december's the plan december in vegas i fucking own vegas my last eight fights have been in vegas i'm gonna put every last dollar i have on dude there. yeah it's gonna it should be a big fight dude it should be a big fight people have been wanting me to fight a, someone rank someone big name and i think i think this next fight should be it but I don't have control. I mean, the UFC, you know, they pick who I fight. I don't pick mm. who I fight. So we'll see. But fuck, yeah, you guys got to go. Let's fucking go. Sugar Sean. Check us out on YouTube. No Jumper. Patreon. <laughs> I'm fucking it up. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate everybody. Doses. My guy.